Welcome to the sixth video on my series of tutorials about the toxic biohazard synthesizer by Max Claster. In the next few videos, I'll cover details of the various effects and processors available to you within the instrument. I'll cover each section in turn according to its route in the single path. After your source sound has passed through the multi-mode filter, it is then passed through a distortion effect. The controls for this can be found in the master section of the interface, and this singular drive control is used to add analog style distortion to the sound. The sound is then passed through the two different effect sections that you can see in the pods placed to the lower left and to the lower right of the interface. Each of these sections can host one of six different effects. The display itself will change to accommodate whatever effect you choose to use. I'll go through each of them briefly to give you an idea on how to set them up. I'll start with the delay, since it is perhaps the easiest effect to describe. All the effect does is hold the sound for a small amount of time before releasing it or playing it. The delay effect itself does not include the original signal. So a wet dry control is included. This allows you to blend some of the original signal back into the mix so that you have the echo effect. The length of time between these two sounds is adjusted using the time control. Alternatively, if you want, you can choose to have the delay relate to the musical tempo of the host, allowing choices that range from 16th notes all the way up to 4 beats long. If you want the echo to play more than once, you can use the feedback control to split off a copy of the output and reroute it back through the effect. As you adjust the feedback control upwards, it will increase the volume of the audio that is being fed back into the processor. As the single gets processed again and again, it will eventually fade to zero. That is unless you have the feedback controller set at maximum, which then will keep feeding back the sound at the same initial volume, allowing the delay to keep repeating itself indefinitely. So far the controls have been quite self-explanatory, especially if you're already familiar with any digital processing. The depth control's use isn't quite so obvious. This control allows you to detune the delayed signal. The range of this detuning is set up with this depth control, and the rate control is used to change the speed at which the detuning changes. Using this control, you can use the delay to produce a chorus type effect. The last delay control is the blur control. This is used to subtly add together the different delays and original signal and produces an effect similar to that of reverb. <laughs> 